Anate. His letters are at the National Archives. You can look them online. Taking over masonry. And there's no doubt people like Avril Harriman are of the devil, skull and bones, all of it is the enemy of humanity. We're on the march. Everybody knows a little history. We know that in olden times, most people were slaves. We know that elites were into a lot of really weird things. Most of the time, human sacrifice. Well, in the year 2012, things are no different. They're just more sophisticated. And in many cases, more hidden. And when you could say what you want about Christians, uh, a lot of them ended up replacing old activities with new that were very similar. But it was Christians who got rid of human sacrifice, slavery, things like that. But then some Christians would say, well, these people are cursed. They deserve to be slaves. But the point is the general march of Christianity reversing much of that. And that's why the system attacks Christianity, because this New World Order, if it's anything, is anti-Christian. I don't mean the little glitter bug down the street, you know, the TV evangelist. I'm talking about do unto others as you'd have them do unto you, ideas like that. This survival of the fittest, this social Darwinistic view, this agenda. Again, everything you look at on mainline TV, almost everything, everything you see in mainline print, Time Magazine, Newsweek, has a overt and a covert message at different layers. And if you really start looking at it, it's all hidden in plain view. Very hateful, very dark, in your face, negative, poisonous, bad. Because the system knows smart, upstanding, strong, conscious, cogent, clear-thinking people are evil like they are. Most people have inherent problems but overall want to be good. And if you are empowered and informed and educated about the secrets and the mysteries of life in the world, you will choose to try to help others. The globalists cannot have that. They need a big, culturally drunk and dumbed down group of varlets and knaves that they can just move forward against with their program. And you analyze the globalist program, it is one-child policies globally, it is sterilization of the poor, uh, it is medical tyranny, centralized eugenics, Agenda 21, environmental inspections, the end of the family farm, the end of parenthood as we know it. It is a very, very nasty system. It is not something that's fun. And all I do is read their public statements of how they're putting this in the vaccines and that in the water and how they're spraying aluminum dioxide, barium salts mixed in the jet fuel on us. And it's making soils uh, not be able to grow plants anymore. But don't worry, Monsanto's coming out with a whole line of aluminum dioxide and barium resistant crops. It's just global salting of the earth. <laughs> what will they think of next? I mean, look at this article by Paul Joseph Watson right now. Just went up at Infowars.com. Carnegie Institute calls for spraying aerosols to block the sun. Global warming solution is already being done through chemtrails. And you've got the White House science czar admitting for at least 18 years, within a year, I guess it's 17, of the guy getting the, um, forget his name, getting the uh, Nobel Prize in science for it. Was it 91 or 92? They were already doing the test. He said, spray aluminum dioxide, barium salts, change the weather, darken the sky, and then now NASA reports the Earth is more than 20% darker. In fact, guys, type that in. Just type in if you have time. Um, we're a skeleton crew today. They're doing a great job. Uh, NASA says Earth, I said 21%. It's like 30% last time I checked. Darker. And again, the average company doesn't know. It's just mandated now to mix these in with a jet fuel then it's aerosolized out, and the earth is 20 plus percent darker. Again, it's all about playing God. There's London Guardian. Earth is 20 percent darker, say experts. Yeah, that's 2003. It's now 30, I think, 2 percent or something. Uh, but uh, continuing, it's it specifically NASA says it's, it's contrails. And again, the new scientist is reporting on Carnegie. 
And again, Carnegie, total eugenics. I mean, you want to wonder why there's fluoride in your water? You want to know why breast cancer is up 2,000 plus percent? You want to know why, I mean, every murderous gift they've given us. These people are just pit of hell evil. Pit of hell. And anything they want, you've got to be against. By the way, they want open borders. By the way, they want to restrict your Second Amendment. By the way, they want Agenda 21. They want carbon taxes. They want sex education, which is really eugenics education. They want to screw up innocence. They hate beauty. You got to see the art they're into. I've done a study of that. I mean, the nastier, the more they like it. Demonization is, it, there is no amount of demonization that, 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 that would come close to who they are. You understand that? Oh, man. Paul posts some of the most powerful stories he does in the afternoon. Everybody's got to visit InfoWars.com in the afternoon. Everybody comes in in the morning and then up till showtime. And that's when we get like half our traffic in a four-hour period when most of the news goes up in the afternoon and at night. Look at this. Carnegie Institute calls for spraying aerosols to block the sun. Here's another one. Again, scientific study links antidepressants in drinking water to autism. Oh, they're killing us something fierce. Man, they're killing us. Man, they're killing us. And of course they are. Remember last year, the case for killing Granny Newsweek? A plug pulled out of the wall. Guys, do we have the Bill Gates clip springing that on you? Bill Gates, Ted Turner, all of them have said, don't give old people treatment. That'll make money for other people. They know full well how the economy really works. This is the only industry we've got taking care of old people. The more heroic care, the better, as long as it's not government, which then bankrupts, as long as it's their money. And if the government isn't chasing it, it will actually make the price low. The economists know that. They know when they raise taxes, it makes less money come in because it stalls the economy. They know all this. They want to consolidate it. They want control. That's what they're after. But they put the idea out there, we don't give this old lady one year of end-of-care health. You let us mandate with a death panel where the doctors can't do what they want. Now the insurance companies practice medicine, the ones that wrote the socialist health care plan. It's not socialist, it's fascist. And anything socialist gets turned to the elites. The big rich guys always want big government programs because they can control the economy. That's so simple. And that's what people like Webster Tarpley never get. He's got the history. He's got the eugenics. He's got it all down. But he doesn't understand that they want the big government to control you in the first phase. Then they come in with a fake libertarian consolidation and privatize the government, but just give government power and taxation to the private corporations to then cut the services but raise even more money. See, it's not left or right. It's full spectrum dominance. And people purposefully will not engage in that sophisticated thinking because it's too comfortable to be in the paradigm there. And I mean, you cannot deny the banksters have always funded communism. You cannot deny that all of this has gone on. Why would the richest men in the world want communism? Because it shuts you down, that's why. You're not exempt from Obamacare, but 2,000 plus big companies are. Your little city-owned power plant isn't exempt, but General Electric is. Your tax money used to ship the biggest new factories we had, General Motors, to China and to Brazil and to Mexico. Not to help those people, but to make sure Americans didn't get jobs. <clears throat> That's our re-education. This is our re-education. I ought to have a film called The Re-Education of America and just go through all the things the globalists have done to us, what they've, how they've wrecked everything. And then after they chop our legs off, go, hey, we're the government. We got some crutches for you. <sighs> the hardest thing to deal with is the poisoning of the children. All right, uh, let me just, we've got the one of the clips here. Uh, here's a clip of um, Bill Gates, whose dad's a top eugenicist, heads up Planned Parenthood, and uh, worked for the Rockefellers in Carnegie. Uh, a total fake company, total government front, just like Google, just like Facebook. I told you now, it's all admitted. It's totally fake. Doesn't run anything totally fake. IBM runs it all.
Here it is. That's a trade-off society is making because of very, very high medical costs and a lack of willingness to say, you know, is spending a million dollars on that last three months of life for that patient, would it be better not to lay off the, those 10 teachers and to make that trade off in medical costs? But that's called the death panel. Uh, and you're not supposed to have that discussion. So you, of course, well, that's making... an interesting thing you just said. Would you? All right, just that's good. The last. We didn't do that on purpose. Whatever clip we have, our, our computers playing it slow. So, just the way it is. Got to have a perfect score with computer screw ups. Now, um, but notice in, in real life, he does talk slow though. And he talks to you like you're an idiot. There's another clip where he's actually addressing teachers, and they clap when he gives that line. And we couldn't dig that up this morning. Uh, but, uh, you know, this is the type of garbage we're dealing with. And then there's this new article out of Time Magazine, How to Die, What I Learned from My Last Days of My Mom and Dad. And when I saw the article this morning at Infowars.com by Mike Adams of NaturalNews.com, you know, he, sa he said, it's trendy to kill your parents off, didn't you know? And he said that they talk about giving bonuses to doctors and nurses that kill people. The quicker they kill them, the bigger the bonus. And I thought, okay, I'm sure Mike's telling the truth, but let me read this for myself. So uh, before I got to the office today, I had the crew go out, because I stopped at the store, they didn't have it, and grab me a copy. And it's on page 18 of the June 11th, 2012 edition out a few days before the 11th. Okay, here it is. And if you look, it's got a photo of his mother and his dad. And how beautiful they were, young, but how bad they were and troublesome and ugly and evil when they were old and how, well, thank God he ran into some really cool doctors that know how to get rid of people quickly. When my parents died serenely with dignity, when you are a death panel, that is the very best you can hope for. So the psych warfare is the best you can hope for is a death panel. And they go into, uh, I approved a do not resuscitate order for dad. It was becoming clear to me that the gentlest possible way these Gessler doctors did not mess around. And uh, the article just goes on. And, and folks, he sits here and again, makes it sexy and admits that the doctors were making money off of them. And still, there's a grain of truth there. But the point is, the state wants to decide when to kill you and is already doing with people that are wards of the state. The Wall Street Journal's done more than 20 parts with what, what's his name, Wesley Smith on this, where they kill people who are paralyzed and begging for food and water. And the state says, we've decided the bioethicist board that your life's not worth living, and they kill you by dehydration, a horrible form of torture, calling it. But, but, but since they didn't inject you with something, it somehow is better because they didn't, they withheld water and killed you. It's how serial killers kill people. You know, just, just ah, I'm going to put you in the cage now and come back in a few weeks. Bye-bye. And people hear this and think, oh, this can't be happening. Folks, I could open the phones up right now. I could cover news articles right now where they're like, well, Mr. Such-and-Such -such did beg for water for two weeks before dying. But, you know, he was a ward of the state.